We're talking about faith's source, the source of faith. And our text here is in Romans chapter 10. And in verse 13, he says, Romans 10, 13, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many can attest to that? You did it and you are. <laughs> How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? That's a question. What's the answer? They can't, they won't call on or act on something they don't believe. How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Another question. What's the answer? You can't, you won't. Now, beware of thinking you know this. You cannot have faith in God unless and until you have heard from God. Now, sometimes people talk, there, there's a lot of talk, loose talk, about believing, especially around, you know, Christmas time uh, and, and a lot of the even kid shows and seasonal shows and stuff. Uh, you'll hear a line they keep throwing in, just believe, mm -hmm. just believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they are not talking about faith in God. They're talking about faith in fairy dust, faith in reindeer power. I mean, yeah. right? I mean, faith in, they are not talking about faith in God. Right. And so we don't want to adopt these, these loose, non-specific phrases of the world and use them with us. In Mark eleven twenty two, 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Come on, everybody said that loud. Have faith in God. Now that's, that's different from having faith in faith. And so some have learned in our circles, have learned some faith principles. Got to believe you receive it before you see it. You got to confess it before you, you experience it. And a number of these things and having done all to stand, stand. But so many times have skipped the first, most basic, most important step, which is what? You've got to hear from him about whatever it is you're, you're believing for. You don't just pick a random verse out of the, the scripture. You need to hear from him. And so Romans 10, 17 brings that out. It says, so then... Uh, faith comes by hearing. That's how it comes. But then he, re he reveals it's a very specific kind of hearing. Hearing by the word of God, the King James says, but the word for word here is rhema. And it's not the same word used for word through the scripture. Logos is used often. It's a great word, but that's not this word. This word's rhema, which is a spoken utterance. And the word for God is actually the word for Christ. There is a word used for God, but that's, that's not it. This is the word used, I guess, hundreds of times in the New Testament for Christ. So literally you could say faith comes by hearing. And the kind of hearing that faith comes through is the hearing of the anointed rhema. The, the rhema Christos, the anointed rhema. What is that? That's the Lord speaking to you. Now, he'll speak to you through his written word. He'll speak to you by his spirit. He'll speak to you through the preachers. He'll speak to you. But it's always going to be in perfect line and harmony with his written word. But it is not a random, generic word. It's a word to you about this. And when you hear that, faith came with it. Now you make your confession. Now you take your stand. We talked uh, 
uh, on Monday some about this that, uh, uh, you know, don't raise your hand, but have you ever made confessions and they didn't come to pass? Have you ever prayed a prayer and it didn't happen and it, and it seemed like you had maybe some scripture for it? Or 12 scriptures for it. Yeah. 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 And it seemed like it was obvious it'd be something that's the will of God. But it didn't happen. So what's going on? You want to make up your mind that it'd be foolish to get irritated with God. Because God doesn't fail. Cannot fail cannot lie, cannot fail, his word cannot fail, and real faith in the real God doesn't fail. But the scripture talks about in Timothy, unfeigned faith, which means if there's a not pretend faith, there must be a pretend faith. And we, we've got into that in previous sessions. Go with me if you would. Um, let's see. To... Um, 2 Corinthians 2, and then also we'll go to Matthew 4. 2 Corinthians 2, and then Matthew 4. What we saw yesterday, if you're with us, Jesus made such definite statements. You see, some of the, some of the strongest in John 5, 19 and John 5, uh, 30. Don't turn there. You're going where you're supposed to be going. See, we're getting in the Word. You got fingers here, you got fingers over here, and you're listening to others. <laughs> I, I thought you could take a, a bunch at once. Can you, can you take it? All right, I'm at the right spot. Jesus said, we saw yesterday, he went into those five porches of sick people where there's hundreds of people. He went and ministered to one man and he was raised up and then he left. He left five porches full of sick people. Was it God's will for all those people to be healed in those porches? Absolutely. Absolutely. Could the power of God take care of that and heal everyone no matter what was it? Absolutely. Then why didn't Jesus clear out all five colonnades? Oh man, somebody was paying attention yesterday. <laughs> According to him, in this same chapter, talking about that situation, he said, I can of my own self do nothing. Now this makes religion furious. And like we said, there are two unscriptural traditions that are continuing to be fueled and kept. And you got to beware because tradition will make the Word of God of no effect in your life. There is the tradition of, you know, so many church people that Jesus did what he did as God. He walked on the water. Why? Because he's God. He raised the dead. Why? Because he's God. He healed people when he wanted to and didn't when he didn't want to because he's God. And he is God. But that's not true that he did it as God. Amen. <laughs> so if you think he did it as God, you can't believe you can do any of it. Because you're not God. So then we found out he did it as a man. He did it as a man, but still held on to part of that old tradition that he could do it whenever he wanted to, however he wanted to. That Jesus could, he could heal whoever he wanted, wherever he wanted, however he wanted. But Jesus himself said it so strongly and repeatedly that he could not. He said he couldn't. So we got to make up, what, what, make up our minds what we believe. The tradition or Jesus? The tradition or the Word? I'm, I'm going to come around another time. Why didn't Jesus clear out all five colonnades of sick people that day? According to him, it's because he couldn't. 
He said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear him say and what the enemy so desperately doesn't want you and I to see is that real faith in God is inseparable from total submission to God. Did you hear that or not? If you're serious about faith and miracles, you want to pour yourself into learning about submission. And the enemy hates submission. Oh, he hates it. He is the most defiant, most rebellious being you have ever heard anything about. And he's, he's continually trying to breathe his defiance and rebellion into human beings all over the planet. That's his big, big thing. He wants us to rise up against our creator like he did. But by the grace and mercy of God, we are not. We have bowed our knee to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We have confessed him as Lord, 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 and Savior. And we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. That he could raise us up how and the way he wants. And that's why it says, submit yourself to God, I'd say first. Then resist the devil. Oh, come on, can you see that? And he'll flee from you. But refuse to submit to God and try to resist the enemy, he'll laugh at you. Because he knows you're doing the same thing he's doing. You're yielding to him. So he don't have to yield to you when you're yielding to him. So to be successful in exercising your authority and your faith, it comes from a foundation of submitting to God. Can you agree Jesus was completely submitted to the Father? Every day, Every night, every situation, everything. Come on, listen to the language. I don't, I didn't come down here, he said, to do my own will. I came to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. I do always those things who please him. I only do what I see him do. I only say what he tells me to say. Come on, did he say it or not? I can't do anything of myself. Is that what Jesus said? Yes. Should we take these words to heart? Should we think about, meditate on them? The servant's not above his master. If the master couldn't do anything of himself, what can we do? Are we as dependent on the Spirit and the Father as Jesus was? Oh, absolutely. Or else nothing will happen. 2 Corinthians 2.11 He says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The church has repeatedly underestimated the devil. Wow. What do, you, what do you mean? He is far more crafty than most of the times we have realized. Far more uh, in a dark, genius way. James talks about a wisdom that's not from above, an earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. The devil, I mean, anybody who rebels against God is stupid. Okay, I'll grant that. But on the other hand, 
he's been around, we don't even know how long, yeah. and he has manipulated human beings for millennia. Yeah. And if you think you can match wits with him, you're already messed up. That's right. Because he never comes to the front door. Right. Never. Right. Never. He ne he's never obvious. Right. Never. He's saying, look at this while he's doing this. Uh -huh. Every day. Trying to get you to do this when actually something totally different is going on. And he's hoping you don't catch on in time. He's much more crafty. He's much more tricky than most of us have realized. The Bible warns us repeatedly, but yet, you know, like many things, folks hadn't paid attention. Go with me to Matthew, if you would, the fourth chapter, and I am so excited today. Because I believe the Spirit of God is going to pull back the cover on some of his trickiness and subtlety. And you're going to see it and not be ignorant of how the enemy does this stuff. And so the next time he tries it on you, you're going to see him coming from across the block and go, I, I see you. I see you. And you're not going to let him trick you. Go ahead and confess it. Say it out loud. By the grace of God. By the, grace of God, by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. I am not ignorant. I am not, ignorant. I am not, oblivious, I am not oblivious. To the devil's devices. The devil's devices. And, I won't be and I won't be removed. From the simplicity. From the simplicity that, is in Christ. that is in Christ. This, this gives you a heads up what to watch for. Beware when it starts getting complicated. Did y'all hear that? When it starts getting complex. When it starts getting complicated. Start looking for the devil. Did y'all hear me? Because what is in Christ? What is in the anointing? The anointed one. Oh, come on. In, in the glory of God, in the anointing of God, you see it. It's clear. It's plain. Is that right? The anointing makes it clear and plain. In his presence, you see it. You know it. But the enemy is always playing angles. He's always trying to come from your blind side. And, and so when you, when you sense it, start getting complicated. That's when you need to say, time out, time out. Wait a minute. In Matthew 4, we have the account of the temptation of the master. And oh, there's so much here. How many would agree these 40 days and nights when the master was tempted, this is a big deal. Yeah. Is this a big deal? Yes. It's a big deal. Yes. Very big deal. Bigger than we have known. Bigger than I had known. I'm, I'm seeing more of it as we go. But in Matthew 4 and 1, this is right after Jesus, you know, was baptized in the uh, river. And as he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came on him in a bodily shape and form as a dove. Now, it is not a coincidence that now is when the enemy pulls out the stops and tempts him full bore 40 days and nights. That's, or especially at the end of it, but why now? He's just as much the son of God when he was 10 or 15 or, or 20. Why now? Well, you see, it's right on the heels of this anointing coming on him. It's right now. As soon as he comes up out of the water and the anointing, the Holy Spirit, and, and he had the spirit without measure. <laughs> when he walked the earth, he was the head and the body of Christ. All the anointings 
of the fivefold ministry and the church functioned in him. He was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Nobody today is the apostle. Mm. If you are one, you and one. Not the one. And that's if you is one. <laughs> Excuse my English. But nobody is the prophet, the teacher, the pastor. Jesus was and still is. He is the good shepherd. The. And so I mean, he had everything operating in him. And, and you couldn't see it in the natural, but the devil and all demon spirits, they saw all that power come on him in the spirit, which is why the next time he goes to the synagogue after this temptation, I mean, spirits just cry right out and go, ha, ah, don't hurt us, don't hurt us. We know who you are, don't hurt us. My voice went up that time like, Je- like Jesus said. That's good. But I was describing the spirit, not, yeah. not myself. <laughs> and the enemy, we, we were given some detail about what the enemy tried to do, and ne- I have never seen it like I do today. You're, you're not going to sleep through this, are you? Are you you're awake. Jesus was led by the Spirit, Matthew 4, 1, into the wilderness. And he was tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. If you read Luke's account, Luke 4, it says he didn't eat anything for all those 40 days and nights. And I don't know what kind of spiritual state he was, but it says afterward the hunger hit him. So maybe for part of that time he wasn't even hungry. I don't know. But, you know, in the presence of God, all kind of things can happen. But then, you know, the enemy's always trying to catch you when you're the weakest. Yes. Yes. He'll watch and wait and watch and wait, and he doesn't hit you when you're strong. He tried to catch you when it's the worst day, you know. And when the tempter came to him, everybody say tempter, tempter. Tempter. The tempter is what the devil is called in this passage. Well, we want to look at why he is doing this. He came and said, if you be the son of God. Now, just up a I don't think he's trying to talk Jesus out of this. He's trying to trick him. And the scripture said that Jesus was tempted. And we got to remember this. Sometimes people say, well, you know, Jesus didn't, that, that didn't affect him. He was tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to yield. And give in and act on the temptation. Jesus was tempted in all points. Just like us. There's nothing you've ever been tempted to say or do that Jesus didn't experience. The difference is he didn't do it. He didn't give in to it. He didn't yield to it. It's not a sin to be tempted. And so the enemy, the tempter comes and says, if you're the Son of God, you could say, since you're the Son of God, or if you're the Son of God, command, I want you to hear that first word. Do what? Command. Do what? Command. He's trying to get him to do what? Command. Make a command. <laughs> command that these stones be made bread. Now, let's just stop right here. What would be wrong with Jesus doing that? Mm. 
Come on, think with me a little bit. Oh, you guys are quick. I, uh, y'all may be too quick for me, but stay with me just a little bit. What would, could Jesus have found scriptures that would support him using his faith and authority to meet a need? Is it God's will for him to have something to eat? Is it possible that the power of God can change a rock into some nice, hot, fresh bread? Yes. Maybe even some butter on the side. Yes. And some fig preserves. Yes. Come on. Strawberry jam. Yes. Uh-huh. Going <laughs> well, <laughs> y'all already had lunch. Come on, stay, stay right here. Um, what would be wrong What would be wrong, I hear people saying, and you are exactly right, you don't need to know any other reason except the father didn't tell him to do that. And he said, I don't do anything except what my father shows me to do, tells me to do. He said, I can't do anything of myself, but why would the enemy tempt him to do that? What does he care? You would think he would prefer if he didn't get any food and maybe starve to death out there. Makes sense. Right? Is he trying to help Jesus? No. Trying to get some nourishment into his body before he gets too weak and passes out? Oh, no, no, no. No. What's he trying to do? He's trying to do the same thing with Jesus that he did with Adam and Eve. What do you mean? He's trying to get him to misuse his authority. to abuse and misuse his faith and his authority. He's trying to get him to listen to him instead of God. Act on his direction instead of the Father's direction. I want you to notice, he's not tempting him to tell a lie. He's not tempting him to steal something. He's not tempting him to commit murder. Why? It wouldn't work. I wouldn't work on Jesus. The only thing that could possibly be a temptation to Jesus is to tempt him about something he's confident in the word about. Oh, come on, are y'all awake or not? That's the only thing that would pull on him. Does Jesus believe he has authority? Yes. Does he believe he can speak a word of faith and miracles? Does he believe that? Every fiber of his being. He knows it. That's why this would be a temptation. He's hungry, 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 maybe feeling weak. It could happen, boom, right now, right here, God does miracles. He created the material universe. It might sound like a big deal to us, stone into bread, but they're both made out of energy. The whole thing came into existence by the Word of God. The worlds were framed and formed. The rocks and the bread and the wheat and the dirt and the sky and the oxygen formed by the energy of the rhema. Anointed. Rhema. So this actually pulled on Jesus. Elsewise, he wasn't tempted. If he wasn't tempted, this passage shouldn't be in there. It'd be a non-issue, a non-thing. Can you see how tricky, how crafty the devil is? You get some insight into it. 
Why don't you, why don't you, he's pushing him. Now think about this. Would the devil ever push you to use your faith to meet a need? Would the devil ever push you to use your faith to meet a need and it would be wrong? What, now, now, come on, what is the act he's pushing him to do? Command. He wants him to command, to use his authority, to use his faith and speak to try, attempt to release faith to make that happen. Why would the devil care? Why would he care? Because what he wants him to do, and it, it wind, you remember at the end where this winds up? Fall down and worship me. Yep. Is that right? I mean, he kind actually, th that last thing, that's desperation. Yeah. The devil offered him, realistically, everything he had and everything he had a control over because he could feel it slipping out of his hands. Everything he had done with every human being from Adam and Eve and since is not working on this man. He can't trick him. He can't trip him up. He, he's pushing him to do what he's made to do, what he wants to do. But Jesus ain't falling for it. Because he is totally submitted to the Father. He only needs to know one thing. Did the Father tell me to do this? He didn't. So there's nothing to talk about. Do you hear? Simple. Sim Come on, can you see this? Simple what? The Father didn't tell me to do it. So I'm not going to try to do it. Simple. Yeah, but, yeah, but, you son of God, you got authority. It could happen. Power can make it happen. Don't try to complicate it. It's simple. He didn't tell me to do it. I've had people get upset well, I, since I've learned a few of these things. I don't just jump into everything. And even if sometimes people are trying to get me to be a part of something, uh, I don't many times, and I've had people get upset with me. Uh, I've had people say, well, well, why won't you do this, or why won't you come? I don't need a reason not to do something. I need a word to do it. Are y'all with me or not? There's a million things every day that I shouldn't be a part of. Right? And only a handful of things I should. I should be here with you today. I should, we should be in this meeting. I don't need to try to pray and find out about all the hundreds of things that somebody else might want me to do. I don't need a reason not to do something. I've had people get upset. Well, why won't you do it? What's the reason? I don't need a reason. Well, why won't you do it? Don't you like us? Yes, I like you. Got nothing to do with that. But you ain't God, honey child. You ain't God. Come on. Yeah. I work for the big boss. I need to hear from him. Somebody say, I need to hear from him. I, I need, I have to hear from him. I got to hear from him. That's not trying to be super spiritual. That's endeavoring to walk in the footsteps of your master. Because he said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear him say. Amen. The enemy is pushing him to use his faith and authority unauthorized. 
on his own, apart from the Father and even at the direction of him. The, come on, can you see that? Is there a lot wrong with this? But just you look at the outside, what could be wrong with using your faith to get a need met? Should we be loose making our faith commands? No, we should not. Was Jesus? He was not. If the Father didn't show him and tell him to say it, he wouldn't say it. And he was so committed to that until when the pressure was on and the temptation was full blown, it didn't shake him. You know what he did say? Hmm. It's written. Man doesn't live by bread alone. What's that saying? I don't have to have bread right now. What I do have to have? Oh. Uh, what, what I do have to have? And this is not just today during the temptation. This is what I live by. This is what I live by every day of my life. I live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That's where my faith comes from. It's where my direction comes from. I got to hear from him. So no, I'm not doing that. I know that shocked the devil. He thought that was a good one. <laughs> so he's got to up his game. He's got to, he's got to, he said, well, okay. <laughs> Are y'all with me or not? Yeah. He, uh, he took him up. Oh man. I mean, he's pulling out the bells and whistles. I mean, yep. I mean, this is, this is spiritual experience. I mean, this is floating through the air. He took him up on the pinnacle of the temple. This would feel surreal. You didn't climb up here. And here you are. And he says, are we going to quote scriptures? Because <laughs> Jesus just quoted the scripture. Oh, are we going to quote scriptures? <laughs> <laughs> is the devil trickier? Is he tr oh, he's trickier than you thought. He said, uh, he, he, basically he said, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's written. You know, it's also written. <laughs> He'll give his angels charge over you. And they'll bear you up in, in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. See, as far as the devil's not tempting him to lie or steal. That wouldn't even get a start with Jesus. So what's he tempting him over? The word. Faith. Authority. Come on, can you see this? What's he going to tempt us over? Especially those of us that love the word and find out some things about who we are in Christ and we got authority in the name of Jesus. That, that's where he's going to hit you. Yep. He's pushing him. Now what you'll see is that, hold your place here, go to 1 John 2. First John 2. Are you thankful for revelation of the word? Yeah. I am so Oh, it's life changing. It's life saving. It's life restoring. First John 2, 13, I write to you fathers because you have known him that's from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have what? You have overcome the wicked one. Verse 14, I've written unto you fathers because you've known him that's from the beginning. I've written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. That's why Jesus was saying it is written. And you have overcome the wicked one. Now, now listen to the very next verse. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father 
is not in him. The reason the devil is where he is and, how, and he will never be saved, he cannot be saved, because he will never change. And he chose with no reason, and nobody tempted him, but he chose to love power and glory and his self more than God. Yes. And since now he is the prince of this world and the God of this world, he has breathed that in to the unsaved masses. Remember the Bible talked about in the last days, men would be lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure, whatever, more than lovers of God. And so what's, what he's trying, what he's testing and what he's trying to see if he can break is Jesus' love for the Father get him to do something apart from the Father on his own. Isn't that what happened with Adam and Eve? Yes. What happened with Adam and Eve, the enemy, through his subtlety, through his craftiness, he didn't tell them what he's trying to get them to do. He's, he's showing them how beautiful the fruit is. He's telling them what it'll do for them and all the wisdom it'll give them and everything. But he don't care about that. He wants them to do what he did. He wants them to choose to do something on their own apart from God against God. Ignore what he told you and choose this, love this more than him. I mean, what Brother Creflo is talking about some of this, right? Yeah. Idols. So that's what he's trying to do. Do you love wanting to eat right now more than you love doing what God told you to do? Absolutely not. Jesus said, no. I don't live by just bread. And so now he's pushing him. He said, so uh, throw yourself off. Jump off. How could that be a temptation to Jesus? It's a demonstration of the Word. <laughs> Are y'all listening? It's a demonstration of the Word. Did Jesus believe completely that, did he know that angels are real? And that they literally would scoop you up yeah. and catch you and intervene and protect you and help you. Does he believe that word? Yes. Yes. Is he confident in that? Yes. Well, what would be wrong with doing a little public demonstration? <laughs> little public demonstration. Get everybody's attention. Be a sign yeah. and a wonder. Right. And then everybody come out and want to hear the preaching and get saved. If you demonstrate and show people your faith in the Word, what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, y'all are quiet. Read, read, read the rest of this. Don't love the world. Love of the world is a replacement for love of the Father for all that's in the world. And he mentions three things. And you'll see these three things in the temptation about Adam and Eve. And you'll see these three things in the temptation of Jesus. It's not a coincidence that it was three things. Three. What? Lust of the flesh. He's hungry. It'd be good to get something to eat. Yeah. Lust of the eyes. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is pride of life jumping off the pinnacle. Another translation says, the ostentatiousness or showiness of life. Beware of trying to impress people. Yep. It's something the enemy can use yep. against you. Beware of trying to prove to people your faith. Beware of it. 
And, and, and see, it's just getting complex and complicated. It's like, well, the Bible said that. The Bible said that. His angels, they'll scoop you up, yeah. Why? I, 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 here I got up here, you know, supernaturally, how am I going to get down? <laughs> makes sense. I said, it makes sense. So they're hanging up here half the night or something. What do I do? I take a step of faith. <laughs> what if you'd never read Matthew? Come on now, wait a minute. Jesus had never read Matthew. What do you do? Would the, would the devil push you? To take a step of faith, to step out in faith, to demonstrate your faith and show people. So that's, that, gets, that gets confusing. No, honey, it's simple. Come on, help me out. Why didn't Jesus jump off the pinnacle? Come on, help me out. Help me out. Help me out. It's simple. I said, it's simple. Come on. Tell me why Jesus didn't jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Why? 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 His father did not tell him to. That's it. That's it. His father did not tell him to. And if he didn't tell him to, he knows he can't do it. He said so. Oh, hallelujah. And so he, he said, uh, no, it's written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Or test, that word can be translated test. You tempting him to let you fall and splatter. Because he didn't tell you to do it. You're doing something your own. You care more about impressing people than you do obeying God. Mm. Y'all with me, friend? Can you see how tricky the enemy is? Oh, yeah. oh he, he, he's tricky. He has a devilish wisdom. But is it hard for us to figure out, church? Is it hard? I said, is it hard for us to keep all this to, come on, we just, we just talking about shouting about the answer two minutes ago. What, what do you got to do? Do I do it? Do I not do it? Do I do it? Did he tell you, the Lord, the Lord, did he direct you to do it? And that's why we need to, be, to stop being loose about the Lord told me. Yes. Because you'll see people, you know, well, you need to pray about that. And, and they'll go and they pace back and forth and, and, and talk in tongues real fast. And they go, oh yeah, the Lord said it'd be all right. They never heard from God. They Come never, on. they wanted to do it. And they just decided they're going to do it. And they said the Lord told them. And that is that pretend faith. Because you pretending, you heard from him. And so all you can have, if you're pretending you heard from him, is some pretend faith. Yep. It's going to get some pretend results. Yep. <laughs> it's just like no results. <laughs> he said, no, no, I'm not going to tempt God. I'm not jumping off this thing. And how many understand? Why should Jesus feel like he had to prove anything? To the devil or anybody else. Yeah. At one point he said he knew what was in man. He didn't need man to testify for him. What does that mean? Oh man, that's being secure in your God. Hmm? He lost no sleep worrying about what people thought about him. <laughs> I heard Brother Lester Summer I'll say one time years ago, he got to a certain place in his message and he braced and he just bellowed. He said, other people's heads is no place 
for me to look for my happiness. That's pretty good. Other people's heads <laughs> is no place to look for my happiness. But you got to be secure in God or else you'll think like that and you'll be comparing yourself to other people and yeah, I think they got more faith than I do and it looks like they're doing better than I You don't know a thing about it. You don't know their life. You don't know what... You don't know how they got all that stuff. They could have lied and stole and got that stuff. You, you, don't, you don't know. And it's none of your business. Just You keep your eyes on the master. You, yeah. Right? Keep your eyes on him. Yeah. You remember when uh, Peter said about John, you know, well, what about him? Because he told him how he was going to go. He said, what's that to you? You follow me. And so when he said, uh, I'm not jumping off here. I'm not going to tempt God. I think this really hit the enemy in a way he'd never been hit before. Because most all human beings fell on the first one. And, you know, Adam and Eve were no dummies. They were brilliant. This is pre-fall. This is pre-curse. You talk about brilliant and amazing. And so after them, it kind of went downhill until, until the master, and now he's run up on something he is not prepared for. This ain't working. And so you see desperation in this next one. You see desperation. He could see it all slipping away because if he can't get him to misuse his faith and misuse his authority, if he can't get him to listen to him instead of God, then he will have no condemnation. He will have no guilt, no shame. He will have full faith to release all this anointing that is on him and it will destroy yokes and remove burdens yes. everywhere he goes. Yes. And that's exactly what it did. Yes. Amen. After the temptation said, he came out in the power of the Spirit. Why? He, then when he did what the Father told him to do, miracles happened. Yeah. Yeah. Miracles happened. Yes. He was completely faithful before the Father. He did with the faith and anointing that he had exactly and only what the Father told him to do with it. Man. Acknowledging he couldn't do otherwise of himself setting us the perfect example. Right. Thank you. The Bible said if you, are, if you say that you are in him, you should walk even as he walked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said out loud, by the grace of God, grace of God I, will walk, I will walk even as, even as just, like just like he walked. He walked. And you see that is in complete dependence on the Father, the leading of the Spirit, complete submission to his daily directions and instructions. Refusing to try to do it any other way, regardless of what kind of pressure comes on you. Because yeah. you will be. I mean, I've made mistakes in the past before I learned these things. And I'm, most of you have. You, you tried to say and do things when the Lord didn't tell you to do it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We've all, right? Yeah. We've all done it. We done, and it didn't work. Yeah. And we shouldn't be shocked. Because if Jesus couldn't do it, what in the world made us think we could? Ignorance, or some arrogance, or a mixture of both. Either way, we repent. I said we repent. He went on to say, the enemy knows now he, he's in trouble. He is in serious, serious trouble because he's got nothing else along that line. And so... For the devil, this next part, 
is transparent. Yep. This is about as honest as you'll ever see the devil. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I mean, he just comes around. He took, him, he took Jesus up yep. into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. The kingdom of Rome, all the other kingdoms all around the world, the palaces, the power, the armies, the wealth, all of it. Showed it to Jesus. And he said, all these will I give you. Now Luke's account, said, he, he said, he said, because it's been delivered to me. God didn't give it to him. He convinced Adam and Eve to listen to him instead of God. That's how he wound up with it. And he's trying to do the same thing with Jesus. And this other stuff of trying to trick Jesus didn't work. It didn't work. He couldn't confuse him. He couldn't trick him into trying to make faith commands and he, he couldn't do it. So he says... All this I will give you. Now, if he hadn't been able to do it, it wouldn't be a temptation. Right. Yeah. And think about this. How many scriptures talk about Jesus being the King of Kings yeah. and the Lord of Lords? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And his kingdom reigning over everything. Yes. Huh? Yes. This is who he is. This is his destiny. This is his future. And you don't have to go through the cross. Wow. It's a shortcut. Wow. <laughs> it's a shortcut. You, just, you get to be king of kings Lord of Lords over everything throughout the whole world right now without the suffering, without the humiliation, yeah. without all that other stuff. One, one little caveat. He said, you got to fall down and worship me. Yeah. What, what does that mean? That means he's still in charge. Come on, can you see that? Yes. That means he's still in charge. If he's worshiping him, he's still true, really the God of the world. And he has offered now anything and everything that he can. This is it. This is all stops out, everything. He wouldn't have done it unless he thought there was a chance that he would do it. And it had to pull on Jesus. You might think, well, I, how could that be? You know, being in the presence of God. Angels who had been in the presence of God, we don't know how long, the devil talked them into rebelling against God. Yep. Don't underestimate his trickiness, his craftiness, his wisdom. Talker, tricker, they ain't never been one like him. And the trickiest you ever saw, they learned it from him. Jesus is looking at all this. And what does he say? Come on, help me out. What does he say? What does he say? The devil just asked him to worship him. What did he say? Get out of here. I worship you. It is written. You worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Worship and worship serve him only does this sound like I only say what the father tells me to say I only do 
what he shows me to do. Hmm? I worship God only. I serve God only. And you better get out of here. And that was, that was to the point where the devil, after all the millennia of deceiving human beings, he did not know what to do. He was at a loss. So he just left. He just left. He left him. And the angels came and ministered to him and I think they had groceries. I do. It's scriptural. You remember? When the prophet, Elijah, there was a time, he was running, was running for Jezebel, is that what it was? And he was out in the wilderness and hungry and he went to sleep, woke up, big angel was there with some food on the fire. Then he said, get up and eat. And then he said, take a nap. You need need some rest. And then get up. You need to eat again because you got a big trip. And he said he went for 40 days and nights. That sounds familiar. In the strength of those two meals. So I'm I'm confident that he got some angel cooking. (laughs) You think you had some good stuff. Angel cooking that gave him everything he needed from those past 40 days. Come on, can you see that? At 40 nights. And so he didn't, he didn't have to speak to any stones to be made bread because he's about to eat in 30 minutes. Uh (laughs) Amen. Yes, sir. (laughs) Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory Glory to God. Oh, my time's up. Stand up. Stand up. Oh, somebody say glory to God. 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 Oh, lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Lift up your praises. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Glory be to God. 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 Close your eyes. I want you to say it out loud. Uh, Father God, God, I will worship you only. I will will serve you only. I will only say say what you give me to say. say. I will only do do what you show me to do. do. I can of my own self self do nothing nothing but with you. I can do all things through the anointed one. Hallelujah. Praise God. 